minimum that we needed for trunk or treat, and so we've had to cancel this year's event. Each year on the first Sunday of November, All Saints Sunday, we remember and honor those who have entered into the church triumphant. Please submit names of your family, friends, and loved ones by today, October, by Monday, October 28th, that's tomorrow, that you would like to be remembered. The names will become part of the song, sung Litany for the Saints, during which you will be invited to come up and light candles in their memory, and you can submit those names online or in the form that's out in the gathering area. <clears throat> On Sunday, November 10th, the Sunday closest to Veterans Day, November 11th, we honor, remember, and thank all those who have served honorably in the military, whether in wartime or peace. Add the names of your loved ones, family, and friends to our Veterans Day list for honor and remembrance. Names must be submitted no later than Thursday, November 7th. This is your reminder of our called congregational meeting next Sunday, November 3rd at 11.15 in the Fellowship Hall for a financial progress report. Information about all activities is included in the RLC Weekly Update posted on our website, resurrectionpeople.org, and on our Facebook page. Leading us in worship today are Mari Wrightson, who is, serves as our lector, Patty Dunn, our music director, the, vo the <clears throat> I'm sorry, the praise ensemble, and the RLC hand chimes. Our video production team is Jeff Slunt on camera, AJ Beck on sound, Kelly Slunt is running visuals. I am Reverend Heidi Moore, pastor here at RLC. Please stand as you feel called or welcome as we begin worship. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Join us for the call to worship. All are welcome. Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sins, whose mercy endures forever. Let us confess our sin and come to God for healing. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have honored you with our lips, but have harmed our neighbors with our tongues. The cravings at war within us cause conflicts and disputes. In our desire to be first, we make distinctions among ourselves. We place the needs of the poor and the suffering last. In your great mercy, forgive us our sins. Draw near to us with grace in time of need and turn us to follow in the way of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God promises to forgive our iniquity and to remember our sin no more. By grace, we have been saved. And in the name of Jesus Christ, the source of eternal healing, our sins are forgiven. At this time, I invite you to share the peace as you feel called or able. Peace of the Christ be with you always.
Eileen Clausen and Matt, Jim and Charlotte Matuzik, Don Bly from Down East Bain. Whoa, yes. Uh, let's see. And we have others who are checking in online from our sanctuary and wishing peace to those who are joining us online. So thank you very much. Let us turn to the rear camera and say, peace of the Lord be with you. Peace. Amen. Amen. And we continue with our gathering hymn, Blessed Be Your Name. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Together, let us pray. Eternal light, shine in our hearts. Eternal wisdom, scatter the darkness of our ignorance. Eternal compassion, have mercy on us. Turn us to seek your face and enable us to reflect your goodness through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. I invite you to be seated for reading of Scripture. The first reading is from Jeremiah, the 31st chapter. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. 
But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. The second reading is from Romans, the third chapter. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced, and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For no human being will be justified in his sight by deeds prescribed by the law, for through the law comes the knowledge of sin. But now, apart from law, the righteousness of God has been disclosed and is attested by the law and the prophets the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. They are now justified by his grace as a gift, through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a sacrifice of atonement by his blood, effective through faith. He did this to show his righteousness, because in his divine forbearance he had passed over the sins previously committed. It was to prove that in the present time that he himself is righteous and that he justifies the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of boasting? It is excluded. By what law? By that of works? No, but by the law of faith. For we hold that a person is justified by faith apart from works prescribed by the law. The word of the Lord. Let us rise to welcome the gospel in song. Gospel according to Mark, the 10th chapter. Jesus and his disciples came to Jericho. As he and his disciples and a large crowd were leaving Jericho, Bar Timaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he cried out even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and, call, and said, Call him here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he is calling you. So throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. And then Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? And the blind man said to him, My teacher, let me see again. And Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has made you well. And immediately he regained his sight and followed Jesus on the way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I invite you to be seated. Now, when you trick or treat, right, you walk, you knock on the door, and you know, you absolutely know, that when, so when somebody opens the door, you're going to have, you're going to see a bowl of treats. Because we have all prepared if there are trick-or-treaters coming to our house, we've all prepared for them, right? Now, 
True confession, how many people have already broken into the Halloween candy? How many people uh, have to go out to the store and buy more? <laughs> so you're ready for, think, for um, Halloween, rather. Now, upon occasion, um, you'll go to the door, and there will be a sign that said, thank you for taking just one, or something to that effect. Okay, Ta Thank you for taking just one. So, um, trick-or-treating, we are preparing for people to come to our homes to knock on our doors. We don't know who they are. Here in this place, God has prepared for us a meal and a time to be together, not knowing who's going to come through our door at any given day. But God is here, and God is calling us, and just like blind Bartimaeus, he was called by Jesus, and he came to Jesus. And as we are here in this room, as we're uh, coming in off the streets, we are called by God, and we are called to be here because God is the subject of active verbs. God, what God has done, what God is doing, and what God will do. Amen. Yeah, just take one. After our fratory, oh, there you go. All right. Okay, it's all right. And so, well, I don't know. I can toss them out and see who catches them, or I can put them right here. And when you come up for communion or go out the door. And since you said something, <laughs> and how about our booth folks who work very, very hard for us? Oh, I can't throw. Ah, okay, okay, hang on a minute. <laughs> Just take it. There you go. I tried, but I failed, right? Amen. Amen. Okay. This morning, we are finishing up our worship series uh, for October entitled The Upside Down Kingdom. And we're taking a close look at the 10th chapter of Mark, which is a crit critical transition between the transfiguration of Jesus and the triumphal entry into Jerusalem. And so, as I've said before, in this crucial chapter, we are finding a collection of teachings about the nature of true discipleship and what it means to live a life contrary to the perspectives and priorities of the world but to live a life that is more in line with the kingdom of God. And each of these texts reveals a different way where God is inverting the culture at large and requires us to live also a life upside down. Today's gospel reading is also fitting for Reformation Sunday. Yes, um, s some folks who know the Reformation Sunday texts well, you've come in and you've noticed that we've kept the Jeremiah text, we've kept the, um, the uh, Romans text, and we will also keep Psalm 46. But also, Mark is a good fit for this Reformation Sunday. When we commemorate that fateful day 507 years ago when Martin Luther nailed 95 really good ideas for reform in the medieval Catholic Church, which sparked the Reformation movement and turned Europe upside down. Now, since chapter 8, Mark, Jesus has been on the way. And here in Mark, it is the eve of the triumphal entry into Jerusalem, and he prepares to make that final turn to the cross and to the resurrection. But before he does, there is one more thing to be done, and that is Bartimaeus, the healing of Bartimaeus. Now, Timaeus means highly prized. The name Bar Timaeus, Bar means son, 
So Bartimaeus, he is the son of the one who is highly prized or son of the honorable, son of honor or son or honorable son. And so the son of honor, Bartimaeus, embodies the effect of exclusion. He is an outsider. He is outside of the city. He is outside of the path. He is outside of the light. This meant that he had no family. He could not work, nor could he fulfill his religious or civic obligations. He was outside of the economy, and he was outside of the community. His life was filled with uncertainty. He is a beggar. He owns one possession, his cloak. And he doesn't know where or when his next meal will be. He is blind. And those who see nothing risks everything. The one who sees nothing risks everything to be noticed by the one who sees everything. And so Bartimaeus raises his voice from the side of the road, from the margins of society where he has been pushed. And he cries out again and again, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And he's crying out out louder and louder and louder. He just won't shut up because he can't. He can't. And the more the disciples and those around him try to hush him, the louder he gets. Bartimaeus knows what it means to be vulnerable. Bartimaeus knows what it means to take an ultimate risk. An enormous emotional exposure comes with risk taking, especially for Bartimaeus, the son of honor. In the first century, honor is synonymous with value. And this risk that he is taking could leave him even more devalued and more dehumanized and more excluded. And so with courage, Bartimaeus is yelling louder. And in his desperation, he no longer cares what people think. He ignores the harsh and the ugly commands to be quiet. And then cutting through this cacophony, Jesus hears Bartimaeus' voice. And he stops. He stands still. Jesus hears Bartimaeus through the chaos. Jesus hears us too through the cacophony and the chaos. And Jesus says, call him here. Now Jesus could have walked over to him, but I believe that Jesus is making a point that those who excluded the very ones who excluded Bartimaeus, the very ones who shoved him to the margins of society, the very ones who excluded him are now told to include him. And Jesus is telling us here to include the excluded, to hear the voices that have been silenced. And and they say to him, take heart, Get, get up, he's calling you. And so casting aside the one thing that he owns, Bartimaeus runs headlong through the crowd. He doesn't wait for anybody to guide him. Now is his chance. And so he's pushing people out of the way. And he doesn't know how this encounter was going to go, but he was willing to show up. Barnabas is coming toward Jesus and nothing is going to stop him. His sight is restored. He's restored to his community, his family, his life, and he leaves it all behind with courage that bespeaks faith follows to follow Jesus. Go. Your faith, your courage has made you well. But here's the interesting thing. Bartimaeus didn't go. <laughs> He followed Jesus as a bold, discerning, humble, and direct disciple. He followed Jesus to his next stop, which is Jerusalem. He followed Jesus to the cross. This text also illustrates that our salvation comes solely through the work and the miracle of God, 
not through our own abilities, but God's and the Holy Spirit and Jesus. And this makes it the perfect Reformation Sunday text. Take courage. Get up. He is calling us. This is an invitation, a mantra, maybe even a threefold change for us to consider. It is an invitation to be of good cheer, reformation, to stand up and speak out, reformation, and answering to God's call, reformation. Caroline Lewis, a commentator on this passage, invites us to imagine that the disciples' words, take courage, get up, he is calling you, were the words that Martin Luther might have heard reverberating in the margins of Romans. Take courage, get up, Jesus is calling you. Anyone willing to stand up to rejection to keep on persisting in the face of rebuke, knows what it means to maintain a reforming spirit. The voices of resistance to reformation are loud and strong. Let's be honest, we're the church. How open are we to change, right? What Bart Emmaus shows us will not be easy. It is not even close to easy, but risk and resolve is central to re reformation. And it's not easy to do, much less remember. David Lowe's, another commenter on this passage, relates a story about Martin Luther's last sermon. Now, Luther died in Eiselben, the place of his birth, which was interesting because it brought, it brought his work full circle. He preached his last sermon there after successfully negotiating disputes between several local magistrates. What David Lowe's didn't know about this whole scene was that only five people showed up to the sermon. What David Lowe's didn't understand or know was that Luther was angry. He used another word. I softened it to angry. And he wrote to a friend about the event, despairing over what he fear was a, feared was a failed reformation. Now, we can all understand his dismay and disappointment. The reality of life is that we fail. I failed three times throwing candy to the AV booth, okay? It is part of life. And just like Luther, sometimes we forget that much of our energy and effort will be given over to failed endeavors. Even with an overhand throw, I couldn't do it. Luther's forgotten that Paul's, that Paul's, of Paul's reminder that we all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God and will keep sinning and falling short. And sometimes our throws will be falling short. We forget that our ultimate hope rests not in our successes, but in God's failure, great failure on the cross. The failure that redeems all failures and successes, binding them together in the promise of the resurrection. We forget that the ultimate hope rests not on our successes, right? My ultimate hope did not rest on the fact or not that I could make, I could throw. Did he forget, like we forget, his own words at the close of the hymn, we will sing at the conclusion of this worship service. Were they to take our house, goods, honor, child, our spouse, Though life be wrenched away, they cannot win the day. God's kingdom is ours forever. Remember that this kingdom, this upside-down kingdom, is God's doing. And so we are free. We are free to risk. We are free to dare. We are free to love. We are free to work. We are free to dream. We are 
fear, we're free to struggle. We are free to fail. And we can do that all in hope, knowing that, as June pointed out, grace abounds even more. God has promised to keep hold of us and to use us in ways that we can't even imagine. And remember, God knows it's not easy to live into an upside-down kingdom. Amen. We continue with our hymn of the day, God is our shelter and strength. It's a paraphrase of Psalm 46, which is one of the psalms that is appointed for this day. Now, this may be new to some of you, so Patty will play the melody line for us. Then she'll play an introduction, and then we'll all sing.
let us faith the faith that makes us one by uh, reciting the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. <clears throat> he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the everlasting Amen. Challenged by God's word in Christ, let us pray for the church, the world, and the whole creation. Eternal Counselor, guide the church along your paths of mercy. Direct it to be a refuge where all are genuinely welcomed and their gifts are celebrated. God of grace. Eternal Nurturer, preserve natural places for rest and rejuvenation. Guide the work of conservationists, park managers, urban planners, gardeners, and all caretakers of natural spaces. Attune us to the wonders we disregard or fail to notice. God of great. Eternal wisdom, strengthen the voices of those who cry out for change in unjust systems. Give lawmakers, judges, and all those who occupy seats of power, listening and compassionate hearts. God of great. Here. Eternal compassion, train us to respond to the cries of those in, in any kind of need. Give co encouragement and comfort to those who cry out for relief from pain, from grief, or from oppression. And especially this day, we remember Cindy Williamson, Heather Rock, Terry Wiseman, Tom Bailey, David Howe, Terry Cuckuck, the family of Lorraine Seifert, the family of Harry Salarelli, JJ and Vince Weimer, Janet Terry, Susan Bingler, Barbara, Kate Hardy, Ashley Hawkins, LaRue Tanner, Ann Tominsky, Evera Saley, Betsy Shinstock, and Heather Masters, Merlin Neff, and all those that we name before you now. God of grace. Eternal servant, grant vision and wisdom to the church so that those who are in need are not ignored. May the command of Jesus to love our neighbors sharpen our focus for work in the kingdom. God of grace, hear our prayer. Eternal hope, may the legacy of the saints inspire us every day. We hold fast to the promise that we will be together in your perseverance forever. God of grace. Into your hands, O oh God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in the saving grace that you freely give now and forever. Amen. I invite you to be seated. At this time, we receive an offering. Uh, the QR codes are on the back of your bulletin and also on screen when they come up. And that's one way that you can give, but you can also give through our offering plate that is there in our narthex. Because of your gifts and your, your presence and your prayers, we are able to offer our online worship. Now, last Sunday, we sang happy birthday to a person who doesn't come to our campus, but who is a faithful, faithful person online, and that's Putsy Abernathy. And I got a message from her thanking all of you for that wonderful song that you sang to her. She said it brought tears in her eyes. Amen. She had surgery on Friday. And she said that her surgery went well. And again, she thanks you all for your prayers. This couldn't happen if we didn't have our wonderful ministry online as well as here on site. May God have the glory. Amen.
Let us rise for the offertory response. pray. Blessed are you, O God, strength of every gift of your creation. By these gifts and with our lives, help us to serve one another and all in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is indeed right, our duty, and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples to eat, saying, this is, the, the, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as our Savior taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Jesus welcomes you to this table. Come, here is your God. Amen. I invite you to be seated. Communion can be done in one of two ways. You are welcome to receive communion in your places, or you're welcome to come here up the center aisle and fill out the rail and receive communion at the rail. For those who are receiving communion at the rail, uh, we do ask that you come up the center aisle, and as you leave, deposit uh, your cups in the bowls, receiving bowls on either side, and return to your seat by the side aisles. <clears throat> For those who uh, wish for um, grape juice, this tray will be on that table there. Indicate if you would like also gluten-free. Come, all is prepared. Christ has laid this table of love and mercy and grace before us. And he bids us all to come. 
all of us to come, no matter our station in life, no matter who or, or what we are. He simply bids us to come. And when Christ says all, he means all. Amen. Please prepare your communion as we sing Lamb of God. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace, grant us peace, Lamb of God. For those receiving communion in your places, the body of Christ given for you. Amen. And again, for those who are receiving communion in your places, the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for you. Amen.
Let us pray. Holy God, you have welcomed us to this meal and fed us with dignity at your table. Send us now to welcome others and to be at peace with one another through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. At this time, I invite you to join in a RLC tradition of holding hands as we sing our celebration hymn and thanks of this wonderful gift that God has given us. Receive the blessing, God, <clears throat> God Almighty, God most merciful, bless us, keep us, and give us peace. Amen. And our sending him is a mighty fortress, is our God. Of course. Jesus. Thanks be to God.